going to own it. Are we doing the, the Hagada of the Prince of We're going to go through the main parts of it. Okay. Yeah, not, I can't go into as much details, too much there, but the main concept we'll be doing. Okay. okay, today's class, we're looking at Pesach, and the aspect in today's class is going to be the idea of Avdut. Phones away, please. Pesach, and we're looking at Avdut. What does Avdut mean? Slavery. The question we need to look at today, my friends, is why the Jews were slaves in Facebook. Egypt is correct. Why we were slaves in Egypt is the question we have to look at. And we'll look at three main answers to this question as to the reason for the Avdut, the Jewish people have to go through and the number of sources with that. Let's begin first with the mitzvah of Pesach itself on page 56. Please open your books, phones away, computers only open to blank pages, and let's see what it says. On the 15th day of this month. So we are locating the holiday onto the 15th of the month of Nisan. Of Nisan. We're in the month of Nisan, the 15th day of the month of Nisan, and that's going to be the day that's called Chag HaMatzot. Chag HaMatzot. The holidays, a few names of the holidays, this is one of them. Chag HaMatzot. Chag HaMatzot means the Chag of. Matzot. What else? Just interesting. Let's look at it right now. What else can you see in this word? How else could you read this word? Ahava. Good morning. How are you? How else could you read this word? Matzot. Wow, it's like a ventriloquist. Your lips didn't move and I still heard the word answer. That's amazing. Mitzvot. We're going to see the connection between matzot and mitzvot. The two words are related. Yeah, what? I have a good Rashi on it. Go. Okay, let's have a look. Shivat Yamim for seven days. Matzot Ochelu. So we're tying together why we don't know yet. Where does it say this? We're on top page 56. It's no, in Vayikra. Chaf Gimel 23, yeah, verse 6 to 8. For seven days you shall eat thy matzah. Beyond Rishon, the first day, Mikra Kodesh is a holy day. So we're going to separate the holiday. The holiday is not one thing. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. The first day is Mikra Kodesh, is called Kodesh. What does that mean? That means there is no Malachah on the first day. Yelachem kol Malachat Avodah Lotus. You cannot do any Malachat Avodah. You cannot do any Malachat Avodah. There can be no Malachah on this day, on the first day of the holiday. That's the biblical version as they follow it in Israel today. We in Chosaras obviously have two days, but we're referring to this. So one for us, the Jewish people becomes two in Chosaras. What else is going to happen? Ve'kraftem ishel Hashem shivat yomim. For seven days you have to bring a fire, sacrifice to the temple, which we do not have anymore. And then by Yomashri, the seventh day, Mikha Kodesh, Kovalech Avdal, same thing. So we have day one is Kodesh. Day two through six is Hall. We'll see, it's going to still be Pesach though. And day seven is Kodesh again. So we have three parts of the holidays. One, then we have the Hall of the Moed, and then we have the seven. Okay? That is how we are planning out this holiday. What's it about? Why are we eating matzah? What's matzah got to do with this entire holiday? What does the word Pesach even mean? No, that was a question. Pesach. What is the word Pesach? We're discussing Can Pesach. Let's figure out what it means. As you know, the first question usually is trying to figure out what the name of the holiday is. <coughs> Something in that name is going to reveal. I'd like to give you two answers. This question is many, many more. But two answers to this question. Pesach. Hila Mimun. Good morning. Are you Egyptian originally? No, you're Moroccan. Tunisian. Tunisian. Wow. Old school. I like that. Hila, what does the word Pesach mean? 
Literally, what does it mean? Pass to pass over. Very good. <laughs> Very good. To pass over. Actually means to skip. Skip over something. As my wife says, don't pass out, pass over. Actually, she says that to me on Purim, actually. Yeah. That's for other reasons. But it means pass over or to skip. Le Daleg says in Russian. To skip over something. Who is passing over what and why? And why is that the name of the holiday? Who is passing over what and why? Chino can you know the answer to that question? Who is passing over what and why? How did they get this unusual name? It's also called Chagamatso, but it's also called Pesach. Hmm. I don't know the answer. Anybody else? Yes. Here, look, get it. Why it's called Passover? Yeah. Hashem himself skipped over the Jewish homes. Hashem. You're surprised you know the answers today. It feels good. Feel good, right? Hashem passed over. Was the delay? He skipped over the Jewish homes, and he saved the Jewish people. When was this? When was this? The tenth plague, right? What was the tenth plague? Makat Bukharot, the killing of the firstborn Egyptians. The killing of the firstborn Egyptians. That's when this plague came. At that point, Hashem passed over. So already we're seeing that this plague thing is to be part of it. And the tenth plague, as we're going to see, is probably the culmination of everything that's going to happen up to that point. Are we following so far? You want to write that down? This happened at the tenth plague. We've named the holiday after an event that happened during the 10th plague of the Aserat Makot. So we have to figure out, first we have to figure out what the 10 plagues are, which we're going to learn and memorize. We're going to group them up as well into three, 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 and then one, the 10th one, is going to stand alone above all the others as being the most important. There's another thing that could be seen. It's not so clear, this one, but look at the word itself and just say it. Can you hear any other words. You should hear two other words when you say the word Pesach. Ah, but you want to try this one? Is that any ventriloquism? Pesach. Pesach. Pe. Sach. What's a pe? Mouth. mouth. That's right. Pe is a mouth. What is sach? No. That's sach. Sach. It's actually with, without a sound mark. It's with a sin, but it's the same sound. It's an audible connection, not a written connection. Pesach, what's sach? Sicha? Conversation. Conversation. The mouth is with a sin. It's not with a samach, but still the sound is the same. Pesach means the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. This is marumaz. This is hinted at. This is not a literal translation of the word Pesach, but the rabbis point out you can't miss it. Pesach, the mouth speaks. We're going to see that a big part of the holiday itself, actually one of the Torah mitzvahs, of the holiday of Pesach is going to be to talk about it. Pesach. Talking, you'll be happy to hear, as Jews <laughs> like to talk, because Jews schmooze. One of the mitzvot of Pesach itself, we're going to see the seven mitzvot on Pesach itself at the Seder table, and a couple of them are Torah mitzvot, and one of the Torah mitzvot is to read the Haggadah. We'll get into this. To read the Haggadah. Okay? Read the Haggadah. Lahagid, to speak over. There it is again. Speak out. And we're going to retell the story. So that's a Torah mitzvah that is going to appear at the Pesach Seder table on the 15th day to speak out, to tell and relate the story of the Exodus from Egypt. It's hinted at in the word Pesach is going to be related to the last Makkah and the Hashem saved the Jewish people not killing the firstborn, which means, by the way, that maybe they were worthy of dying, the Jewish people as well. And Hashem still did that. And Pesach, the mouth speaks. We're going to talk about this reality, and that's going to be one of the mitzvah doraita of the holiday itself. Okay? Are we together? Are we following? Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's Monday morning making you think and stuff like this. I know it's tough. Let's have a look at three reasons why Hashem made the Jewish people into slaves in Egypt. Three reasons 
why Hashem made the Jewish people slaves in Jews. What was the purpose of it? It wasn't a coincidence. It's not a uh, sociological study. There's got to be some root reason as to why Hashem chose the Egyptians and Egypt itself as a location and what it was meant to do for us. How long, first of all, were the Jewish people slaves in Egypt? Does anybody know? 40 years. 400. Oh, now, okay. I'm getting two answers. I heard 400, and I got a 210. Well, which one is it? Is it 400 or is it 210? Depends where you start from. So, the answer is it depends where you start from. Yeah. The Torah says, when Avram Avinu was told that his children, his descendants, would be slaves for 400 years. For 400 years. However, for a number of reasons which we'll see, that was reduced. The main reason is that had Hashem not reduced this number, the Jewish people would never have got out. They would have remained for their entire existence as slaves in Egypt. So Hashem did us a favor and took us out early. There's a lot more to it, but it ended up being 210 years was the final tally. If you start counting from the birth of Yitzchak, which is actually a descendant of Avraham Avinu, he was told his descendants would be, it actually ends up being 400. So, so it's not, of... yeah, I believe from the birth of Yitzchak. That's a Rashi of Chomish mentions that, I believe. However, the t final number was 210 because that was his children, and Yitzchak had to go through very, was he? I think it was Yitzchak. It was Yitzchak, it was Yitzchak right? Um, so it ended up being 210 years. Why 210? Because there's a number of, the main reason is because had the Jewish people not left in the Jewish year, and it's the only Jewish year you need to know for this part of the course. And the Jewish year is. No, two, four, four, eight. The rest of the course is going to be dates within the year. You're going to have to know all the dates within the year. But the only year you need to know is two. That's where all the action happens. If there's one year you know about and need to know about in, the, in Jewish history, that's when all the action happens. Write it down, memorize it, and tattoo it onto your brains. Two, four, four, eight. That's the year the Jewish people left. Forty years later, in the Jewish year, two, four, eight, eight, they entered into Israel. Actually, right before Pesach. Right? But right now, it's two, four, four, eight. The Jewish people are leaving. That means for 210 years before that, they entered into Mitzrayim, and they remained there. Why? Why did Hashem put the Jewish people into Egypt for that many years. What was the purpose of it? You should know that Egypt, so actually let's talk about the word itself, okay? Egypt in Hebrew is, is? Mitzrayim. 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 Let's look at that word itself, because the word itself is going to reveal something to us. Words reveal. You get your notebook out now. What does the word Mitzrayim literally mean? Write this down. Yes. I can see Tsar, but you know what? Let's exp you're right. Let's expand it a little bit. What's Mitzar? Min Karasiya Anani Faberka. From the, not the depths, from the, the valley? Oh, no. Emek? That's Emek. This is Meitzar. What are Meitzar? No, it's like a sea between two. Narrow confines. Yeah. Narrow <laughs> confine. This experience is going to be like a narrow confine. It's constricting. That's a better word. It's going to constrict. Narrow what? Confine. Confine. You're stuck somewhere. Constricting. Meitzar. You can write that down. It's good. No, I know what it is. I don't know what to do with it. Fine. Hebrew is more important. Okay, we were stuck. What? This. Yeah. Yum. Yum. C, you're right. But actually, let's look at this as numbers. What's Yud? Ten. Ten. What's Mem? That comes to? Fifty. Now, the number fifty should shout out to you. The number 50 should shout out to you. What does that number usually represent? Actually, more 49, actually. More 49, and then 50. So there are 50 levels of spiritual impurity. 50 levels of Tumah, say the rabbis. We were stuck in the most depraved 
and spiritually degenerative place in the entire world. There was nowhere more spiritually damaged than Mitzrayim. And within Mitzrayim, there was nowhere more spiritually damaged than where the Jewish people were living, which was in Goshen. That's correct. The Jewish people were in Goshen. There was nowhere worse than Goshen. We were in the schmutz within the schmutz, as my Rebbe used to say. Yes. In Mitzrayim. Goshen, I was told. They went to Goshen, and the Jews would live in a place called Goshen, mixing in with the other Egyptians, and Egypt was the worst, and Goshen was the worst of the worst. So we were made sour in the 50s, we were entrapped in the 50s. Oh, just sorry to make you jump right to the end of the story. Where do we replay this number out again? You've got to see the connection. It's no coincidence we're going to count 49 days from Pesach till Shavuot, right? On the 50th is Shavuot. So that journey from Pesach to Shavuot is going to be the remedy, day by day remedy as we count to get us from this spiritual contamination that was Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, into Har Sinai, where the Jewish people re received the Torah 50 days later. Can you see that reflection? No, what's the I'll say it again. The Jewish people were trapped in the most spiritually worst place in the world. There's a spiritual level called Yum. 50. That's the worst, most contaminated. You can't go lower than one. Once you're lower than 50, you disappear. The, the Jewish people are at the cusp of going into non-existence. Actually, we're going to see most down. of the Jewish people now. It's called, it's called 50. It's called Hamishim, right? It's just represented by over here, Metiyam. We're trapped in this spiritually confined place. Now, not only was it spiritually confined, it was also a thing, we were also slaves. So there's two forms of slavery we're gonna talk about. One is physical, and the other is spiritual. And it's gonna be hard to figure out which one is worse. The Jewish people were both. They were Meitzeriyam, Mitzrayim, Meitzeriyam, write it down. Trapped in the 50. Mm? Oh, yeah, they're trapped in the 50th level of Tuma, of the lowest level. That's how bad Egypt was, physically and spiritually. It was devoid of any spirituality. That's what you were trapped. They were taken out boop, by Hashem on the 15th of Nisan, and they were taken for 49 days. And on the 50th, they arrived at Har Sinai, which was the remedy to this. So the 49 days of the Omer, we are going to count. And then the 50th is Shavuot, it's going to be what takes us there. Are we together on this? Are we putting this all together? Yeah. I get it, but I just don't get the name Meter Yam. Meter like, is Yam it indicates it's like Over here is just the numbers. Take it numerically. We were trapped, surrounded is by Meter, by 50. Yeah. It's Gematria 50. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Rina, what's on your mind? Goshen. Goshen is a place. Goshen. <laughs> Goshen is where the Jewish people were in Mitzrayim. Yes. There are going to be two types of slavery. Like physical, like yes, physical and spiritual. We are redeemed from both. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about four redemptions, which are going to be celebrated with four cups of wine. Four redemptions we're going to see. Four cups of wine when we get there. Each cup represents each one of these redemptions. And these redemptions are physical and spiritual. Four cups for four redemptions. Then we'll talk about a fifth cup, which is Eliyahu Navi, which is all about Mashiach, which is going to be the end of the Seder, but that's not for now. But that's where we're going. Are we together? Yes, Sarah. So for Meter Yam, um, so we're trapped on the 50th level, which is... We were very, very close. Mm -hmm. We got to the lowest low. The Jewish people in Mitzrayim <coughs> were the lowest low, which is why most Jews did not leave Egypt. And had we stayed one more year, the Haggadah tells us, we would never, we would have completely assimilated. There'd be no Jews left. So Hashem had to take us out early. After 210 years, we would not have survived that exile. It was that bad. Yes. Sorry, can you just repeat? You said we count from when? We're going to count from Pesach, right. from the first days of Pesach, actually, right through till, actually, we're going to have the second day of Pesach, <coughs> because you're not, Mar B'Sivah Simcha, and that's going to count 49 days, and on the 50th, it's going to be Shavuot, when we reach Mount Sinai. So I'm just showing how that came each day we count, it's going to, what takes us out of the 50th level. Do we, do we do that because of this? Yes, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. 
Absolutely we do. We're actually looking forward to receiving the Torah. Right? The Omer is a very happy time. It was a, it was a sacrifice that was brought, a Farley sacrifice. Very happy time. Happens to be many years later, something bad happened. But the Omer from Pesach to Shavuot is actually a really happy time in the calendar. It just happens to be many years later, a lot of Jews died, so it becomes a day of mourning, times of mourning. But it's not a day of mourning. Originally, it was a very happy, joyous time. Goldie, you had a question? Are you clear? Okay, so what are the three reasons for the slavery in Egypt, physical and spiritual? What was this Meitzayam all about? The three reasons are, number one, look inside your books, page 56. Number one, to strengthen the Jewish people's trust in Hashem. To strengthen our trust in Hashem. Number two, for us to develop a close relationship with Hashem. Those are two different things. We need to <coughs> have our a muna build, and to build a relationship with a Kodesh Baruch, have bitachon with Hashem. And finally, number three, to show the Jewish people the consequence of pursuing and making our raison d'etre the pursuit of money. The dangers of overzealous pursuit of physicality. We'll see when we go through each one of these individually, but those are the three reasons. Yeah. Number one, strengthen our trust in Hashem. Two, help us build a relationship with Hashem. And three, to warn the Jewish people for all of history to be very careful not to be overzealous and over pursue physicality. Okay? Let's go through these together and let's have a look first of all at God's words to Abraham, Abraham Avinu, about this servitude. Now look very carefully, because there's something missing from this description, and you're going to tell me what it is. But Yomer Elav, this is in Bereshit. Tedvah 15. But Yomer Elav, Ani Hashem. And God said to Abraham, I am God, Hashem said to Chaim, Or Kasim. I took you out of this place called Or Kasim. Latet, Lachet, Ha'aris, Azot, Lerishta. I'm going to give you this land of Israel to inherit. Yom Hashem, How am I going to know? How am I going to know that I'm going to get it? So Aravinu put a little bit of doubt into this equation. Says Hashem. Says sorry. Says the Gemara. Amrav Abu Amrav Elazar. Why was Hashem Avram punished by having his descendants in slavery for 210 years? Why do we have to go through the slavery? That's the question. Why do we have to go? Why is Hashem telling me you're going to be a slave? Right? And he answered, because Avraham Avinu was lacking some emunah that Hashem would give the Jewish people the land of Israel. So that's number one? Yeah. Okay. We're still building up. We're in number one. Okay. We're in number one. What is that his descendants were going to be given the land of Israel? Because how are we going to know? Prove that we're going to get the land of Israel. Oh, you're lacking some faith over there, Avraham Avinu. You're lacking a little bit of trust. I'm going to give it to you. That response that Avram gave, says the Gemara, was like, well, give me a sign. Well, you're, you're going to trust me? There's a little bit of lacking over here that is going to have to go through some experience and some help that's lacking from Avram and his descendants that they're going to be given the land of Israel. What's missing over here? He's not being told where he is going to be a slave, right? He's not being told where he's going to be a slave. Hold on to that question. Says the Maharal on this piece of Gemara. Look at halfway down. Hashem placed Avravinu's descendants in exile because he was lacking in belief and trust in him. Why is he punishing his descendants? Because if Avravinu is lacking this trust in Hashem, how much more so will his descendants, who are not as great as him, going to be lacking? And Hashem realized, you know, if you don't have this faith in me, I think your descendants are going to be lacking some as well. We're going to have to fix this faith problem you have. You're trusting me, says Hashem. And therefore, Hashem put his descendants in exile in Galut in order they would correct the mistake and fully trust in Hashem. So Hashem is putting us into Galut. Galut. Galut means exile. Now, this is not one of the four exiles the Jewish people are going to go through. But... It's going to be as bad as all four of them. This is the prototype of all exiles 
of all the Jewish people right through Jewish history. This is not one of the four exiles, but it's going to represent all four of them that are yet to come. Okay, of which we spoke about one already with the Purim story, if you remember. They would also see Hashem's power and his good deeds and show that he loves them. Because Hashem is going to put them in exile, which is going to fix them. And then he's going to rescue them, and that's going to make the Jewish people love him. So there's a lot going on over here. There's a lot of a relationship we're going to be building over here. And he's going to do that by having the Mitzrayim go through various plagues. Turn to page 58. So you're saying that God put us in Galut so yes. he could save us and then we He put us things? in for us to learn from it. We're going to end up, right, Mina Meitzik, right? I'm going to call out from the confines and then Hashem is going to rescue us and that's going to make us love him. So there's a few things happening. This challenge we're going through as a nation and as individuals is Hashem is going to test us, put us in difficult circumstances. This is true for all of us. Put us in difficult circumstances in order for us to call out Hashem, Hashem then rescues us for us to be thankful and grateful and then love Hashem for saving us. That's the way it works. Uh -huh. Seems like weird. I don't know, it seems like an abusive relationship. Yeah. It would be abusive. It would be abusive if the reason was to abuse us. But if the reason was, I'm going to give you a test. Uh -huh. You're going to have a final. You're going to have to work hard. You have to study. If you don't, you're going to fail. Am I nasty? But you're so mean. Those little kids say that, right? Why are you testing us? You're so mean. Go clean up your bedroom. Why are you doing that to me? It's not fair. I'm like, because that experience, somehow, you may not see it in your childhood, but that experience is going to make you into a better person. Kids don't see that. They don't see that. And as, young, and as adults, we don't see why all these trials and tribulations actually make us the better people. But your question is a good question, and that's Rashi's question. Look at Rashi's question. Rashi has that exact question. Follow inside for one second, please. Rashi's going let, to let, let Rashi talk. That's why it says in Devarim, look up tape part, page 58, V'etchem l'kach Hashem, you Hashem took, v'yotziyetchem mikura barzel. Hashem is going to take you out of the kor ha barzel. That is how the Torah refers to Mitzrayim. Write those words down. Kor Habarzel. Habar, sorry, that's a Zion. Habarzel. What's a Kor Habarzel? Why does the Torah, why is God referring to Mitzrayim as a Kor Habarzel? It is a, I don't know what a Kor Habarzel is. Iron. Iron, that's right. Kor Habarzel is a purifying, Iron crucible. Iron crucible. Like That's hot what place. Mitzrayim is. Yeah, it's like a very hot place. It's a very hot place. What do they throw into an iron crucible? Iron. That's Rashi's question. And Rashi says, who kli? This is a vessel. This is a, an item. Shemezekakim bo et zahav. That purifies gold. What? We what purifies gold. Well, when they take gold out of the earth, it's not just got gold in it, it's got lots of other minerals and ions that you don't want, a lot of dross that you don't want. How do they purify this metal? They throw it into a very hot furnace and they burn up and all the schmutzy stuff ends up separating and they scoop it off and throw it away. That is the metaphor for Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is a very hot iron crucible the Jewish people are the gold that are being thrown in heated up uncomfortable painful and through that slavery experience the dross the disgusting elements of us are going to be burnt out scooped away and what are you left with pure gold says Rashi pure gold Rashi is answering your question, Ahava. Why is Hashem doing this? Because this painful and nasty <laughs> slavery experience in the hands of the terrible Egyptians who are physically disgusting and spiritually disgusting somehow is going to purify us, says Rashi, and make us pure gold. It's good for us. 
It wasn't just to torture us. It's not just like smack on the back of the head, which many people do deserve. But that's not this case. It's going to purify us, and it's going to burn away the elements that are going to hold us back. Because this experience is going to create the Jewish people, a new golden nation. But I just made that up. Trademark that. Good name for a book. A new golden nation. Because we're now becoming Am Yisrael, Kalal Yisrael for the first time. Right? This is when it becomes. Up to this point, we were Ivri, we were Hebrews, we were slaves. Now, for the first time, Hashem, God Himself, is forming a nation which has never happened before and never happened since. Other nations have occurred through groups of people coming together and living together and working together. And we're like, no, 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 no. This is very different. God Himself went into Egypt and literally went in and pulled us out. Anivalo Malach. And Nebel Osaraf, me and not an angel, me and not. And Hashem gave birth to a brand new nation for the first time. This was a very painful and difficult experience. And actually, I have a, there's another metaphor which is used in a few places, and that is birth. The birth of a nation. Why? Why is a birth? What's birth like? Is that a fun, pleasant experience? No. I've had the pleasure of being present at five births. Actually, six if you include my own. Not that I'm a mind. And um, they're challenging experiences. <laughs> they are painful. I don't want to shock any of you. Yeah. I know the movies as well. Right. No. It's like pushing them. And then everyone's like, no. Long, painful. And eventually you go from extreme pain to extreme joy. Same thing. The Jewish people were literally, this is not just a metaphor, we were literally given birth to. That's why Shem was like the birthing coach that went in and took us out of Mitzrayim. That analogy, by the way, we're going to see it, there's more to it. That's where we were born. The man we ate in the Midbar is called Halavan, the white. Just like a baby suckles from a mother, we suckled from Hashem and drank the white, the milk from Hashem, the man. And then we grew up at Harsina, yeah. Is the book here that That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. Ask a better question. We just went through our Sinai and we sinned with the golden calf. And then we complained about the man. Yeah. I know. It's hard to believe the Jews complain about the food, isn't it? Who believes such a thing is possible? Is that better preparation for our history than Jews complaining about the food? Okay. It's a good question. We'll come to that. I'll try to answer that question. Not an easy one. Even when everything's perfect and everything's great, we still can't be happy with what we have. It's hard to understand. Okay, look at Kasav Kabbalah, one of the commentators. Please look inside on page 58. He says, Kor Barzel, that's one interpretation. Kor Barzel, he says, Kuhu Klishu B'Zakim Zahab, he quotes Rashi, Kizaya Tachlet Amiti, this was the real Tachlet, the real uh, motivation. Hamachavim Amen Yisbarach, the Sha'abdam Mishraim, why Hashem put us as slaves in Egypt to purify, to become better people. This was going to test us, build us as a nation, the Tsarfam, to purify them. Kazab, just like gold. The Korashid Paradu, which is like a vessel that separates a Sigim, Yishazav Tahor Levad. Takes away all the bad stuff and leaves the perfect gold at the end. Right? Halasa Poshim, made to be a Choshek. And that's why we're going to see right now that not all the Jewish people left Egypt. And by the way, you can't even say that because they weren't Jewish people. Right? They weren't Jewish people. They became Jewish at Harsinai. What were they? Ivrim. They were Hebrews. They were Hebrews. What percentage of the Jewish people left Egypt? What percentage? We're saying that we were burnt up and a lot was scooped away and didn't come out. It seems, just from that analogy, that not all the Jews came out seems like or not all the Jews came out. Says the Torah in Shemot. Look at this unbelievable Chomish and Rashi. Vachamushim alu b'nei Yisrael miyar Yisrael. Chamushim. The Jewish people left. Chamushim. What does Chamushim mean? Chamushim. Rashi gives few answers. The first answer is armed with weapons. 
Rashi says Chamushim. He says a lotion of arm. By the way, Rashi then gives another answer. When Rashi gives a second answer, that means he wasn't so happy with the first one. His first one, I believe, if I remember correctly, yeah? You did this Rashi recently? Yeah. Is that we left armed. What was the other reason Rashi gives for this word Chamushim? One fifth. Chamush, 20% of the Jewish people left Egypt. Only 20% of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob left Egypt. Whether this is a literal number or a figurative number, I'm not too sure. When did these other four-fifths of the Jewish people die? Ooh, the plague of darkness. Why that plague was chosen, we will see. According to commentators, by the way, most people are not aware of this, it's not even true. <clears throat> many people died during that plague, but many just stayed behind. And when many years later, Moshe Rabbeinu turned up and said, okay, it's time to leave. Let's get out of Egypt. Here we go. Many turned around and said, yeah, I think we'll stay. Imagine that. They didn't want to leave. Now, did they become Jews? No, because they didn't reach Harasina. And Harasina was a mass conversion, as we will see when we discuss Shavuot. <coughs> but they are family of ours, aren't they? They're still blood relatives, Nachon. I mean, they still came from Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and yet most did not leave. So this purification didn't just purify the people who left, it also purified us as a nation and left a whole bunch of people aside who were scooped off and ended up staying. Because the ones that left were the ones that became the Jewish people, and we, the Jewish people, are the descendants of that 20% that left Egypt. So there's two interpretations for Hamushim. Armed, ready for war, the men, not the women. The women left with? The women's left with? Musical instruments. That's right, Miriam left them. Why would they leave with musical instruments? Because they're when they're gonna sing. In the river. I mean, right, because the, yeah. the women knew, they had this fortitude. Miriam and Avia knew the Jewish people were going to be saved and we'll have a reason to celebrate. That's one of the signs that the Jewish women were able to experience the salvation at a much higher level. We'll see actually, it's actually only through the merit of the righteous Jewish women that we got to leave with Shrine in the first place. Okay, we together, we're doing a lot today, I know that, but it's all important information. Okay, What's so that's. The translation for so Rashi's giving you. Rashi's saying, yeah. I'm giving you two possibilities. Hamushim means armed, right? Or it means one fifth. Or it means one fifth. Yes, Rashi. Hamushim. Achad mechamisha yetsu. Only one in five left. Barba chalukim meitu bishloshia mefeila. And the other four fifths died in the three days of darkness. I mean the plague of darkness. Right? Look at the spas at the bottom. No, what? No Jews stayed in Goshen. We said a bunch of people stayed. That's exactly what we're saying. Died. Well, they no, no, they didn't. No, we're saying a whole bunch stayed, didn't just die. I'm saying many died, but I'm saying that even those that didn't die, and they ended up just staying and not leaving. Wow. I've heard that elsewhere. They just so didn't want to leave. They're just they like we're not Jews, interested. Though. They weren't Jews. Not all the Abraham's sons, Isaac and Yishmael. Like, not all. No, no, I'm talking specifically through Yaakov. Right. Yeah, you're right. Abraham had the descendants through Yishmael. Yeah. Not about them. Talk about the ones that came through Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They end up staying and not leaving. It's what? Where are they today? Their descendants are probably knocking around somewhere. They're not Sarah or Shoshana or Shani or Raquel. They're, I don't know. It might be Raquel. Highly unlikely. Bottom of page 58. Says the Sfas MS. Let me tell you the purpose. Haratzon Bagula Mitzrayim. So the reason Hashem put us in was that He could take us out. You get it? We were put into Galut so that we could have a Gula redemption. God bless you. Gula Mitzrayim, who she yeda, so we should know. Ki Hashem Yitbarach Otsiyanu Misham, that Hashem took us out. Lefi, Kesha Adam Shoket. Because when a person forgets, Umid Gelomar, and says to themselves, Kochidov Simiadi Asali. My strength and my abilities created all the success for me. That is a very common problem, says the Torah in Devarim. 
that people may turn around and ask the nation, think that all our success comes from ourselves. So our very beginnings, at the beginning of history, was Hashem saying, you're going to be successful in Jewish history, but let's not forget that your beginnings were very humble. You were a bunch <coughs> of slaves. I don't care, you're a big businesswoman, a big businessman, you're a big knocker, you have millions and billions and you're famous and this and that. <laughs> One second. Let's take you back to your beginnings. Your great, 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 great grandfather and your great, great grandmother were brick schleppers. Uh, oh, and also, oh, let's not forget where you came from. And you became successful, says Hashem, because I took you out. Humility and gratitude. It's all being thrown in. That's what it says. Because there could be times in history be like, oh, look how successful we are. We've created nations and we've created countries and we've built up societies and financials and all these buildings and all the stuff we've built. Remember where you came from? One. And two, it's not you. Hashem took you out. Hashem's a creator, not yourself. This is a lesson for all of Jewish history. That's what he says. So Hashem bring, brought us to a state of helplessness and then redeemed us. And that is true right through history as well. Before the great redemption comes, remember the Purim story? We're brought to a place of helplessness and then we're redeemed. First of all, helpless and then redemption. We're brought to the lowest place. We're humbled. We build trust in Hashem. Please, Hashem, take us out. And then, boop, Hashem redeems us. That's the pattern of history. Turn over the page. That's why he says, This galut, hayeta, the varerika, baruchu, the entire angels to show clearly that Hashem changes the world of Klal Yisrael and Ben Yisrael. He's talking of the nation. Yes, it's a nation. So let's go into this point. Let's just double click on this point one more time. It says Rav Kessler, every time, whenever there is a, a need to give a right, he's talking personally, personally, whenever there's a need to give a righteous person the possibility of rising to a high level, he's thrown into the worst environment. What is Hashem? What is the system of this world? Egypt is teaching us a very important lesson. Before you get a chance for greatness, you have to be thrown into the worst place. You would have thought, why? Right? If Hashem wants to make me great, right? Fly us on El Al to Har Sinai, give us the Torah, and then float us on eagle's wings. I don't know, in some fancy way. What is this? Why do you have to go through hundreds of years of terrible servitude and slavery? I mean, it didn't start bad. It started great with Yosef. Every gallop starts amazing. They work us in, they hug us, they kiss us, and then they try to kill us. Every single time. And he says that's true as a nation, but it's true as an individual. What's the secret of this? Whenever Hashem wants to make you great, He's going to test you, put you into a terrible environment, and then He's going to take you out. That's what he says. He's thrown into the worst environment. You should learn the evil. He should learn that evil is futile. He's thrown into the, to learn that evil is bad. Right. We know slavery is bad because we were slaves. We know racism is bad because they were racist against us. We know anti-Semitism is bad because we've had to deal with it. We're going to learn to appreciate that, have sympathy on other people, and that's going to help us become much greater people. If it all just starts great, remains great, we become great people, we don't appreciate all the terrible things around us. And that's not going to help us in history. He says, so too, in preparation for the Torah, because we're connecting Pesach and Shavuot. Here's Pesach, and that's going to lead us to Shavuot, right? This preparation, one to the other, is going to involve 210 years of slavery. That's the Hachana. That's the preparation. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying the preparation for Mitzrayim, for, for the Torah, is to go through challenge. Is to go challenge and be redeemed. Look at this word. You've got to see these words. Look at page, sorry, page 59. I'm not making this up. You can read it yourself. 
When Israel needed a pair to accept the Torah, God did not send them to the heavenly yeshiva where, where Moshe Rabbeinu took the Torah from. Hashem said, okay, we're going to get the Torah. Let's all fly into heaven. This beautiful spiritual... No. What does he do? He says, no, no, you want to get the Torah? You've got to become a slave, an Ebed, in the worst place, among the most evil people in the entire world. Weird, right? Right? To slaves to people who had sunk to the 49th level of impurity. There are 49 levels of impurity. The 50th already is so bad, you're gone. Okay? The most depraved and godless level of physical existence. This slavery, says, brought them to a state where they cried out to Hashem, the Zaku al Hashem. We were in such a bad place, we just cried out because of the physical and spiritual slavery. So this return to Hashem, which began in the pole extreme of of this physical environment was the cause of their astonishing ascent to the spiritual level of receiving the Torah, which is considered the 49th level of spiritual purity. So it's minus 49, takes us to plus 49. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Wait, two things. So this is, I think, trying to explain, like, could be, could be, could be saying why she's, she's saying, Maybe this explain why bad things happen to good people. I believe this is definitely one of the reasons. Absolutely. The Jews were good and do anything wrong. We didn't deserve the slavery. Hashem was very really bad to us. And one of the reasons is, this, this is going to, how do you say to form in Hebrew? How do you say a form? A surah. Sur, oh, surah mitzrayim. Sar is sur. It's going to form us into a nation. Oh, that's deep. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Sar <laughs> Tzur, eh? no? Oh, yeah. It's not mine. <laughs> I don't make it up. <laughs> right? Mitzar is going to Tzur. It's going to form us. Challenges form us as people. Wait, the other yeah. thing I want to say? Um, uh, what do you want to say? There was another thing I wanted to say. Okay, hold on to it. I'll come back to you. I'll hold on to it. Okay, fine. So you've seen the two of the thing. This, yes. Many, many oh, started, yeah. Well, only the, only the tennis got out. Yeah, many people died. What? No. As a nation, we were, though. The ones that were were the ones that were going to create the Jewish people. But the majority but they were chosen. The majority were not. The majority were not. For a long time. They were not ready. They didn't want to leave. The ones that died didn't want to leave. But what about, like, what about they didn't want to leave. What about, like, older people? Oh, yeah, they left. They left with old people. The old people left. They did. Oh, you say previous generations? Okay. We'll come. Okay. We're going to see that the Jewish people as a nation were, comprom were comprised of this initial group. And this is part of Tchiat Ameitim. It's not for now, but we're going to see. Everyone gets a chance. Everyone gets a chance. And all the souls are present at Har Sinai. So we're going to see that as well. That's well, impossible. That's impossible. Say, like, Shani remembers what she wanted to say, everyone. Remember, guys. Here it um, comes. Oh, Better be good. So, but, right. So God... Uh, did it to us, like he made us slaves, right? But then they complained that we have the minds of slaves. It's like, how can you do that? Like, you can't say, oh, I'm gonna make you slaves, but then you complain that we have the minds of slaves, but you did it to us. It's like, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what the heck? You hear the question? <laughs> Were the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, the ones who ended up in Israel? Were the Jewish no. people left Israel, the ones that ended up in Israel? No. 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 Why? And actually, even they didn't qualify for Israel because they were a slave people, slave mentality. And by the way, it's one of the reasons that Moshe Rabbeinu was the redeemer. Where did Moshe Rabbeinu grow up? In a palace. He came from royalty. That's why he didn't have a slave mentality. That's one of the reasons he and was even chosen. Didn't get to get to and even, well, that's for another reason. That's for another reason which he uh, lost his temper with the, uh, oh. by hitting the rock. When Haketa Sela would hit the rock. But he was meant to. The plan A was he would meditate the Jewish people out, and they were all going to enter with the Jewish people sitting with the golden calf because they had the slave mentality. They always had it. Look upon the page 59. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like kind of weird. Because he did it to us on purpose, and then you're complaining that we have the slave mentality? Because we did have it. We didn't come out. We could have come, come out. It was ingrained in us. Yeah. No, for another reason. Because he lost his temper, yeah, according to the Rambam. Plan A. Plan A. Okay, fine. Well, Hashem knows everything, right? Hashem's so Yediyah, 
Hashem's knowledge doesn't affect our Bechira, our free will. They still have free will. They could have entered. Plan A was that they would all leave and they would all enter. Then the Jews in Egypt said, we don't want to leave. And a bunch stayed behind. And then, shh. Rina, Rina, Rina. Lindsay, Lindsay, face the front. (laughs) Okay, so the Jewish people said, we're going to stay, we don't want to leave. And then you have the Jewish people in the midst of Ryan. And then they complained about the food. And then they worshipped the golden calf. And then went to Rabbeinu. So a lot of it fell in. Right? And they have the spies, the miraculous games. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. There's bad stuff that's going to happen in the midbar. Most of that's because they still have the slave mentality. They never really... You know what the answer is? The Jewish people left Egypt, but Egypt never left the Jewish people. Bam. Bam. Mic drop. <laughs> Mark a drop. I like that. Yes, that's what happened. They left Egypt, Egypt left them. Look at the bottom. That's how it started. How did it start? The redemption. At the very outset, the Jews were offered payment for everybody. What about Paradu? Paro came out and said, I'm going to pay you for every brick you make and every brick you think. And he had them going. And what do they say? Ooh, nice business, this brick business. That's what the Tosaf Shalom says. But Chila, he offered them money for every single brick. Or him with Mamon, but because of their love for Mamon, money, Baula Sojotim, they started making a lot more. After that, he's like, I'm not paying you anymore. And they became slaves. So it started off us getting involved in the brick business because we saw this great potential for money. After that, however, after that, midterms. After that, we realized that the pursuit of money for the sake of money is a futile existence. And that's the third and final thing that we learned from the slavery in Egypt.